So the, this sense, as I was sitting here and listening to everyone, is all about education, right? To me, the music, right, that we just heard, it's really education to me. I seldom go to a live performance, but I thought I just went to two. And then we have the uh, crystals and clouds and quite a few things to learn. So about education, let me talk to you about education, about what I did quite a few years back. Sorry, I have to go back. So then I left Hong Kong about 40 years ago. And I intentionally showed the latitudes the parallels, right? Hong Kong is on 22nd and Toronto 43, 40 years ago. But then eight years ago, then I jumped across the latitudes, the parallels again. And then I realized Hong Kong is on the Tropic of Cancer, and that in Chinese is a return. So that's an omen, let's say. So let me tell you about my education and what I did with education in a parallel manner. So the parallels. So now, it was 1992, somewhere in 1992, I was a researcher. I taught in the college, and I was a founding member of the Toronto Biotech Association, and I was on education. So now, Jurassic Park came up, right? The cloning of the dinosaur, so everyone's scared. So let's do something. I said, we have to deal with that, we have to educate. So then the first thing is then, if we educate the public, right? We have to explain to them. So I did the uh, lectures, a thousand uh, audience at a time, and there are 30 million Canadians. So I will never finish that. So let's just focus and say now, look at the kids, the high school, the high school kids who are staying home. The university kids are gone, right? So I educate the high school kids, then they will educate the parents for me, and therefore public. So we started two years later and say focus on the high school students, grade 11, 12. I would start all this biotech project for them and brought them out, promote the interest, right, motivate them. So then that was a story. Now still there are a lot of students, so what do we do? Then we look at this part and say we need to do teacher training, right? So we train the trainer, so then we will say, I will start two years later, and these are all on my voluntary time, on my side, and I'll do a few things. So we train the trainer, and you know what? Cloning of Dolly, so now it's replicating, okay? Then we kept on going, and on the one side, Human Genome Project. Genome is the whole set of genetic information within one person, in your cell. So now if we are going to read through it, that's an international effort, reading through every single details in the book of life, and I will explain that. So in the meantime, I built a biotech center with 1.2 million Canadian dollars. Somehow I did that, and just to quote, this is something that you can look at. We started with a Canadian biotech education resource center. Look at the rippling. The logo represents rippling. We push it out. Then now you morph into a bigger organization. That's beyond me. So then now, somehow building the biotech center is really the, the lead that I was then lured back to build the Genome Research Center at the University of Hong Kong. So then, with, during that time, the Human Genome Project then was completed. Now, so this is on the side, the biotechnology research side. And while we we're at there, we joined the International Health Project. So, I'll explain in the next slide. We do something, and I can answer a deputy by a certain deputy somehow. We build a biotech center, and this is the Hong Kong version. And I build a biotech lab, I can start teacher training. This is again on the side. I couldn't do very much yet. Later on, 2006, I left, and I do a few things. So here, in Hong Kong somehow, I cannot deal with the public, seven million people. I will focus on teacher's training, and I would build from there, right? From there, the teachers, trained teachers, take their students to the biotech lab, and then they can teach, and I will help. Then finally, we talk about the public. Hopefully, we raise the bar. So now, when I look at the biotech lab, we build it up, we have the activities that's to train the teachers, then students, then public. So 
teachers are working on it. Now, being a, a, a very senior in terms of age, a teacher, I have to teach, right? And therefore, I put a tie on. Among the audience, I'm the only one wear a tie. <laughs> so now, who, what is biotech, right? Biotechnology, the term, you can say biological sciences, foundation of sciences to create products, insulin and biopharmaceuticals to drug and cure diabetes or even cancer at a point, services, bioremediation, clean up the environment. So that's kind of difficult. So let me call a 10-year-old Jerrine, and she said biotechnology is really a tool for looking closer at nature to find solutions to improve the earth, right? To improve the health of earth and its people. Now, so gen for biotechnology then, one simple application, genetic engineering. Now, I have a, a jellyfish, not the one Klaus was saying, right? The real jellyfish with a green fluorescent protein gene, we take it out, put it into a bacterium. Here you cannot really see it, at E. coli, right? A germ, a bacterium, and we put it in, and the bacterium then begins to fluoresce. Now, that's simple stuff. At this point, 30 years ago, that's done, right? You can put, instead of green fluorescent protein, then you can put an insulin gene into it, and the bacteria will, will be producing the drug that you need. And now, therefore, for type 1 diabetes, all the patients would then have human insulin made this way. So that's one little breakthrough at that point 30 years ago. That was nicely done. So now you look at the impact of biotechnology on the health, on the health of Earth and its people. Now, we teach the students in there again. Now they're doing DNA fingerprinting, high, higher classes, higher grades, they'll do something more. But the younger ones doing microbiology, right? Looking at bugs, looking at bacteria, something that you cannot see, but by experimental approach, you can see them, right? So the biotechnology lab, we did the teacher training, and then now students. And then finally, and for Marisa, Right, two-year-olds or three-year-olds can then look at a microscope, a Leica microscope, the top of the line, and an 80-year-old. You are looking at my microbes, looking at something that you won't be able to see other than by a microscope. The younger guys and they will play with the uh, uh, whatever experiments we can design for them. From very uh, young age to the older ones, we can have them learn the biotechnology. Now again. The purpose is to promote the interest, to motivate them. And when you look at the entire story then, I build it up from what is DNA, that's the, 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 the level. You talk about DNA, and DNA we can say secret of life. These are all the different models. They can do something, and at, depending on the level, the family can fold a paper model, right? And then the younger ones, sorry, the younger ones can then, we are jumping a little bit here, so, sorry. Now, so these are Twizzlers from Canada, okay? And then marshmallows. They can put it together and, and then make a DNA model out of it. Now then, of course, not just making the DNA molecule per se. They are making a, a gene that carries normal information or defective. We talk about genetic defects, right? So then what they can do, then, sorry, again, it jumps a little bit. So then this is something that like you can have the kick and eat it too. So that's one thing they, they are very interesting, very interested in, but then again, the, it's the information that's stored on the DNA molecule, which was deciphered or discovered in 1953, and now we are 57 years later, what have we done, right? Biotechnology move on quite rapidly. So then, the other thing is, and the Nobel laureate mentioned to me at one point, biotechnology is about DNA, DNA is not visible, so come up with a method that then the students can pull the DNA out, you cannot see it's a big strand, and touch it and feel it. DNA is real. Right? 
DNA genetic material is real. If we, we put it under a microscope, there, there are thousands of strands of them packed together. Okay, now, then inside a cell, human being, and again, I do a little bit education, okay? Very soon it's, got, it's done. Now, so inside your cell, there's the entire set of information. We call it as a genome, right? So a genome, this is one portion. I put it in the digital library in the school. So information there, genes here, there, and then I like talking to the students there. And then after that, I said, who wants to be a scientist? So every little arm raised up. And I'm sure there was a, a moment, perhaps Iran, Iranian moment of their career choice. But that was my reward, right? So then they were quite motivated, and hopefully they will go on. Now, I mentioned about that at the University of Hong Kong, we did do this. Now, the entire book of life was then deciphered by 2003. In the subsequent two years, we ran off all the genetic variations. And you know what? You and I, according to the Book of Life, we are 99.9% .9 identical. But the 0.1% are variations, genetic variations. So uh, multiple com uh, countries then join together. Hong Kong is part of the China team. And Hong Kong then decipher the genetic variations and the outcome was that genetic variations actually have a lot to do with the susceptibility to diseases, diabetes, right? So quite a few things. Now, so then we talk about, and this morning I said, uh, Annabelle was here, right? Showing all the seven peaks on Earth. That was magnificent, right? I said, wow, that's great. She got to the mountains. I never did, right? So if I cannot get to the mountains, move the mountains to me. And I quote, someone else just said that, right? So the teacher said, I cannot go, I cannot take my class of students to you. Time, effort, right? Financial burden, but we cannot go to the mountain. So if I take my biotech lab, put four wheels on, we move the mountain. So Six Six Yun is a charitable organization and said, we'll fund you, we'll, we'll be the sole sponsor. I said, thank you very much. About USD, about a, a million dollar US. Well, I will build a bus within a year, run it for four years. So by 2009, we build it, okay? And hopefully some of you have seen it or soon to see it. Now, the idea was that at that point, I talked to Volvo, that's a chassis, and that's Euro 5, the first one in Hong Kong. I tried to build it as much environmental friendly as possible. And then what we did then is build a box around it and I designed and then built the lab. Now I almost did every screw myself. But again, that was something I was quite happy and at the end we designed the exterior. And Olo of Dim Sum somewhere there, he is the one. He is the artist who did all this and I was quite amazed. Now you look at the by itself, I go and auction off the biotech, right? And on the door notice that I said on board. So biotech on board. You do biotech learning, practical, hands-on experiments on board, inside the bus, inside the coach. And we'll put, and I design it so that 40 students can work on it and, and can work inside and most likely, or most of the time, I would be the instructor. On the bus itself, on, the, on this bus, we put 10 solar panels. So I would have energy from the solar, from the, from the sun, right? I have separate uh, power generators. We will turn off the engine, right? The bus engine, when we stop, will produce the minimal volume of carbon dioxide, whatever. So that mobile lamp could operate in the middle of the desert. Now, we train the teacher here, so now we move the, the mobile lab to somewhere in a community. We can teach the teachers there. Then we do also the students, and you notice then with all these colored lab coats, they are primary school students, right? For high schools, it will be white coats. Now, so we do a few things, they were quite happy, and also noticed that with uh, my assistant, and we actually try to build the lab and, 
and equip it with colorful instruments. You notice it's colorful, not a professional biotech lab, white and, and gray. So this is a colorful, not an avatar type yet, but it's a in reality, avatar in reality. Now, so the third one then, we again, we do outreach programs. Now, the, we have our own students serving as teaching assistants, community, and again, you can see, and again, that might be a, a two, two and a half year old uh, student learning, or learning in, in the or biotech on board. So now, I, I, I'm going to finish up and say, let's look at the parallels again. I returned in uh, 2003, 2003 to five. we finished the, uh, the HapMap project, measuring all genetic variations, and I did a little bit of teacher training. Again, this all on, on the side, I was still full-time with the university. Now, 2006, about the time I left, there's now the stem cell. We talk about stem cell, we talk about the controversial uh, uh, facts, Right, it's an embryo and you're destroying it. Now we look at, in 2006, a Japanese scientist then bypass all this requirement and talk about stem cell. I'll get back to that. Now, our biotech mobile lab program began and I started doing all this. In 2009, we, we had the inauguration of a mobile lab and this year, we started doing quite a number of activities and in the meantime, this year, in May, there's another milestone. A synthetic cell was then, de was then proclaimed, and it was a success in turning chemicals, in organic chemicals, lifeless chemicals, into life. So now, a quick explanation. 1997, we talked about cloning of the dolly. Now, no longer. That's not important. What, what is interesting then, it's a cell, that's a bacterium cell, little bacterium. And now you can take this, this are DNA genetic materials, take them out, put in something that's chemically synthesized, and put it into it, and ho lo and behold, a cell was formed, right? And the cell has life, and you call it Cynthia. That's in May this year. Then the stem cell, about stem cells that can be coerced into all kinds of cells to repair your heart, lung, one on. Now you talk about that Japanese uh, uh, invention. Take a cell from your skin, turn it into a stem cell, turn a stem cell into a heart cell. Now, so that's the, uh, that's the improvement. So now, back to, to the last uh, slide. You look at DNA as a double helical structure, and I brought a, a model to show you uh, uh, later on. So then, if you unwind the DNA molecule, then you will show something like a parallel strands. We call it as a strand, okay, like a double, like a railroad, the rail track. But this unwinding has a lot of meaning, a lot of essential biochemical process. For example, the DNA replication, they have to open it up. The double helical structure has to be unwinded. Now, the next, then I did a little trick here. I will take the DNA molecule, unwind it. So I will, I will I bring this and show, show it to you, a double helical structure. That's a DNA molecule, right? That's a DNA molecule. It can be unwinded into parallel tracks, and it can be twisted back to a double helical structure. That's what we, are, we have inside our cell. So here I said, the parallel is in the same, right? My life in doing biotech bio research, biotech education, I can intersect them. And at the end, I quote a poet saying, knowledge comes. Now, the mobile lab, myself, my presence in Hong Kong, we can deliver, we promote, we motivate, and the race will come. So that's my last uh, statement. Thank you.